Hello, 405. Welcome to Lab 4, Methods Used to Determine Exercise Intensity. So the objective for this lab is to study the different methods to determine exercise intensity. And so we will be doing this by performing three different exercise bouts, the zero to peak, carbonin, and the RPE. Those three are different ways that we can prescribe exercise intensity. So we will be studying the zero to peak method, the carbonin me method or heart rate reserve, and the RPE method. So let's talk about threshold. That is the minimum dose, that's intensity, frequency, or duration, that produces an adequate stimulus for physiological adaptation. And last week, we talked about the different cardiovascular training adaptations through this figure. These are all the different um, adaptations of cardiovascular function with aerobic training. So we know that with aerobic training, there is an increase in stroke volume, an increase in cardiac output, and thus an increased effectiveness of cardiac output distribution, right? an optimization of peripheral flow, an increased blood flow to the active muscle, and thus um, greater oxygen delivery, improved oxygen delivery to our working muscles for us to continue that aerobic exercise and training, right? So that's one of the main adaptations in cardiovascular function with aerobic exercise. That's an increase in oxygen delivery to our active muscles. So aerobic exercise thresholds, um, we can do this by prescribing intensity or threshold through our FIT principle. That's frequency, intensity, time, type, Right, so for frequency, um, these are your ACSM recommendations for aerobic training. In summary, frequency, three to five times per week. The duration, 15 to 60 minutes or 90 minutes per session, right? And this can be spread out through different days or within the day, right? Uh, we don't have to com completely um, or complete the duration of the aerobic exercise in those 60 minutes, we can spread it out in the day or spread it out during the week. You can start 20, 30 minutes or even less for sedentary individuals, right? And progress them from there. The intensity, 40 to 85% of the VO2 reserve. Um, if you want moderate intensity exercise, that could be 40 to 60% or vigorous intensity exercise that could be over 60% of the BO2 reserve. Another way that we can prescribe exercise intensity or threshold is through energy expenditure, uh, up to 1,000 calories per week expended, um, and even up to 2,000 calories per week may be okay for most adults. I don't see this often. I personally don't use this as a way to prescribe intensity of exercise or prescribe, you know, minimum threshold for my client to achieve and complete for their uh, weekly training. Um, energy expenditure is creates a little more of an idea of my clients. Um, that my client needs to expend this many calories and it puts a lot of em emphasis on energy expenditure, right? Burning calories instead of creating that objective of improving aerobic fitness, uh, creating more emphasis on improving our cardiovascular um, health, our cardiovascular fitness. So I don't prefer, I don't, generally recommend using energy expenditure. I don't use it personally. I'll use percentage of heart rate max or the other methods that we're gonna use and we're gonna study in a second. But just for information, this is something that you can be aware of and mindful for your clients. And so cautions should be made for if you are expended 
expanding up to 3,500 calories or 40 um, or 4,000 calories per week, which can increase the risk of injury and overtraining, right? And this is very dependent on my client's uh, fitness level, their total, um, if they're professional athletes, right? And they're engaging in very high uh, level training, high volume of exercise, then this might be different, right? The caution of um, expending this many calories, but usually for sedentary or overall healthy adults, um, caution should be made if they're expending around this range of calories per week. So some challenges pre with prescribing exercise intensity. Uh, prescribing and measuring proper intensity can be a challenge, right? Because it needs to be high enough to promote physiological adaptation, but we also have to be mindful in avoiding accumulating fatigue and or, or overtraining. So it must be individualized based on the individual's unique attributes, such as their fitness level, their uh, preferred mode of exercise in aerobic exercise, right? So we have to be mindful about how we're prescribing exercise, the intensity of that, and also monitoring that intensity over the weeks as we progress our client to ensure results and that we are promoting that physiological adaptation, right? That our client is continuously improving their aerobic uh, fit fitness. So let's talk about exercise intensity, relative and absolute. You can prescribe intensity with um, the following in either relative intensity methods or absolute intensity. So our relative intensity can be our heart rate methods like percentage of heart rate max, percentage of heart rate reserve. For instance, for this lab, 85% uh, of heart rate max, and also on functional capacity methods, like percentage of VO2 max, percentage of VO2 reserve, percentage of uh, max METs, um, and even percentage of one rep max, right? Like an 80% of one rep max of the um, barbell squat. You can also use rating of perceived exertion, right? The RPE scale as a relative way to prescribe exercise intensity. You can also use absolute intensity methods like power output, weight, speed, pace, time per lap, target heart rate range, VO2 or METs. And so for lab for today, we are going to be studying the following exercise intensity methods. So, to prescribe intensity for this lab, we're gonna use the following three common methods. The zero to peak, that is percentage of heart rate max. Heart rate reserve, that's also known as the carbonin method. And the RPE, um, using the RPE scale. Another very common method that we won't be doing this week in lab, but we will be do using this method next week for lab five is going to be the VO2 reserve method. So let's talk about the zero to peak, otherwise known as the percentage of heart rate max. Um, this method uses, like it says, right, a, the, that percentage of heart rate max. And we can use it as the heart rate max, the predicted value or in the actual value of heart rate max. For heart rate reserve, also called the carbon method, you're using this formula. To calculate heart rate reserve, you need the heart rate max minus the heart rate at rest. And so to calculate that target heart rate, you need that percentage times the heart rate reserve plus the heart rate at rest. And that would give you that percent of intensity using the heart rate reserve method. The VO2 reserve method, very similar. You need the VO2 max and the VO2 at rest. VO2 at rest is a constant that's 
milliliters per kg per minute. So VO2 reserve equals the VO2 max minus the VO2 at rest. And so that value you'll input here as VO2R, VO2 reserve, that would be the percentage of that intensity that you want to prescribe times the VO2 at rest plus VO2 at rest. Excuse me, VO2 reserve plus the VO2 at rest. And then the RPE method that we're using the original scale, the 6 to 20, um, where you can prescribe exercise to be, you know, within a range of uh, numbers on that scale. All right, so let's go over an example, a 60% intensity zone example using all these different methods to prescribe intensity. This is something that you will do for your lab partner as well. This is a sample subject. Uh, this information is, is a 21-year-old um, individual. The heart rate max is 199 beats per minute, and the heart rate at rest is 68 beats per minute. The VO2 max for this individual is 40 milliliters per minute per kg. So let's use the zero to peak method or the percentage of heart rate max. If we want to calculate 60% of the heart rate max, that will be 0.6 times the heart rate max. That will give us 60% of the heart rate max. That is 119 beats per minute. So fairly simple, right? We've done this before in lab. Now let's look at the heart rate reserve method or otherwise known as the carbonin method. This is one method that you will use for lab today as well. So to calculate 60%, that's my intensity zone that I want my client to work at. To calculate 60% of the heart rate reserve, I'll use my formula that is the percentage times the heart rate reserve plus heart rate at rest. So if I plug and chug my values, it is 0.6 times 199 beats per minute minus 68 plus 68 bits per minute. I input the formula, I solve, and I get 147 beats per minute. Before I move on, I want to make a comparison between those two methods that we used, right? This first method that was just a simple percentage of heart rate max compared to the carbonin method, a percentage of heart rate reserve. As you can see, for the same uh, percentage of the intensity, that is 60%, we got two different values, right? This is very different. Using the percentage of heart rate max, 60% we got that is 119 for this client. But for this client, if we use the carbonin method, the heart rate reserve formula, we get a higher number for 60% intensity, right? That is 147 beats per minute. So when you are using the carbonin method, the heart rate reserve formula, the value that you will obtain is going to be slightly higher. So just be mindful, just be careful about this distinction. So if we go back and do the reverse for solving, what would be that percentage of heart rate max? 60% from the carbonin method would equal 74% using the heart rate max formula the zero to peak method. So as you can see, the percentage, the intensity using the heart rate reserve method is higher. So you'll be able to um, do this for lab as well. For your lab partner, they will use, they will be training at one percentage of the intensity. And then using the heart reserve formula, you'll see that that value is slightly higher. And now in regards to VO2 max, if we want to prescribe intensity using VO2, we can do this as well. 60% of VO2 max. My client's VO2 max is 40 milliliters per minute per kg. 
So I just take 60%. That is 0.6 times 40. That will give me 24 milliliters per minute per kg. That will be 60% of the BO2 max. What if I use the BO2 reserve formula? That would be, I need to use the BO2 max and the BO2 at rest, which I've mentioned that is 3.5. So if I input the numbers in my formula, that is the percentage times the BO2 reserve, that's BO2 max minus the BO2 at rest, plus the BO2 at rest, I input the numbers and I obtain that 60%, that intensity of BO2 reserve is going to be 25.4 milliliters per minute per, kg, uh, per kilograms. So again, as you can see, comparing the percentage of BO2 max and the percentage of BO2 reserve, this BO2 reserve formula, we obtain a higher value. If we convert back, that would be 64% of the BO2 max, right? So just a distinction I want you to be aware of. Now let's talk about your metabolic flow chart. This flow chart is going to allow us to determine the exercise volume and the intensity of cardiovascular exercise. So this is going to be your best friend. You're going to be using it throughout the semester where we will be able to, again, determine exercise volume, such as the energy expenditure, calories expended per minute of exercise, right? According to the method of that cardiovascular exercise. So let's start down here. These three boxes are different methods of aerobic exercise. So you got the your ergometers, that is, you know, the arm ergometer or the leg ergometer, like the bike, that we use in cadence, resistance, your treadmill, right? Your regular treadmill, you can walk on run, and the stepping, stepping uh, equipment. So for these three modes of exercise, we can use a formula that will allow us to calculate the relative BO2, the uh, oxygen uptake while you are performing that specific type of exercise. So for this lab, we will be looking at the oxygen uptake, right? The BO2 of you exercising on the bike, right? Pedaling on the bike. So like I said, we'll be using this formula down here that is specific uh, to the bike, the leg ergometry, to calculate the VO2, oxygen uptake while you are biking, exercising. So that VO2, exercising on the leg ergometry, we can use this formula. That would be the work rate times 1.8 divided by the body mass in kilograms plus seven. So we'll be um, getting a lot of practice using this calculation, this um, equation. All right, so with your uh, metabolic flow chart, let's uh, zoom in into these three. These are your three different methods of expressing oxygen uptake. So we have relative VO2. As you can see, it's in milliliters per minute per kg. You can convert relative VO2 to absolute VO2. That's in liters per minute. Using this formula down here, right? VO2 in milliliters per minute per kg equals to the BO2 in absolute terms divided by the body mass in kilograms times a thousand. You can also express oxygen uptake BO2 through METs. METs equal the BO2 in relative terms divided by 3.5. We won't get a lot into METs in lab. This is just for your information. 
that in case if you need to convert to METs, you have this formula available to you. All right, moving on, still looking at your metabolic flow chart, zooming in to the snapshot, this is the relationship between energy expenditure and oxygen uptake. So oxygen uptake, right? We just talked about it. You can express it in these three different ways. And in order for you to calculate energy expenditure, such as how many calories you expended per minute of exercise, you need to convert it in to absolute terms, your BO2, oxygen uptake, to liters per minute, right? So you can use this formula like I showed you before, and you can calculate energy expenditure, which is energy expenditure abbreviated as EE, calories per minute, your absolute BO2 in liters per minute times five. Five is a constant in this equation. Then from here, once you calculated energy expenditure, you can calculate total energy, total calories expended, right? And also total time, total time from that exercise bout. So again, going back to our metabolic flow chart, the goal of this flow chart is for you to use it um, and to be able to determine the exercise volume, right? Energy expenditure, how many calories you expended per minute of exercise. And more specifically, how many calories per minute of exercise while you were exercising on the bike, right? For this lab, we're using the cycle ergometers. So as you are biking, we can use this cycle, the leg ergometer equation. We can calculate the oxygen uptake, right? The BO2 that you were, um, I guess the oxygen uptake of you exercising on the bike. Once you obtain that value, you can convert it to absolute terms and you can use the formulas to calculate energy expenditure and know exactly the exercise volume, energy expenditure. So when you're going over through your calculations, I want you to be aware of these values. The numbers in green signify that if when you're calculating those values, that you should be within this range. If you're not within this range, that means that the calculation went wrong somewhere. So for example, if you're calculating relative VO2, it should be a value between 3.5 to 85. If you don't get a value within these uh, numbers, then some something went wrong in your calculations, right? So you should go back to double check your numbers. When you're calculating absolute VO2, it should be anywhere between 0.25 and 7.0. And again, if you calculate absolute BO2 and it's a number that is not within this, this range, uh, go back and check your numbers. And same thing for energy expenditure. Um, for the bout of exercise that we're doing for today's lab, uh, it doesn't have to be within this range, right? Is it, this is very dependent on the minutes of exercise that you will spend. All right, so now let's go over an example on how to calculate energy expenditure. So this is also available on Canvas for you to see and go over the calculations at your time if you need more time, right? So these are for you, go check them out and go over the calculations on your own time if you still have any questions about the calculations. So like I said, you will be exercising on the bikes. So I want to know the oxygen uptake while I was exercising on the bike. So I can use the formula, right? BO2 in absolute terms, milliliters per minute per kg equals to the work rate times 1.8 divided by the body mass in kilogram plus seven. So if I 
plug and chug the uh, numbers from this example subject, this example work, uh, workout, I get 23.2 milliliters per minute per kg. Once I calculated the relative field uh, to using the cycle ergometry equation, I'm going to be able to uh, convert from relative to absolute VO2. So from that, I use my VO2 formula, VO2 in absolute terms, liters per minute equals to the VO2 in relative terms, milliliters per minute per kg divided by a thousand times the body mass, I plug and chug, and I get that I have, uh, that it is absolute VO2, 1.8 liters per minute. From here, once I know absolute VO2, I can calculate the energy expenditure, right? So I use my formula, energy expenditure, VO2 in absolute terms times five. I plug and chug and I get nine calories per minute. And for this example, the total bout of the exercise was six minutes long. So if I want to know the total caloric expenditure for that six minute bout of exercise, I just multiply like uh, nine calories per minute times six. That gives me, I expended 54 calories on that six minute bout of exercise on the leg ergometry, right? On the bike. If you feel overwhelmed, it's okay, don't worry. The example calculations are on Canvas for you to follow along, and we will also get plenty of practice in the lab in person. All right, so for today's lab, like I said, we're gonna be going over three different exercise bouts using the three common uh, ways, methods to prescribe exercise intensity, that's the zero to peak, also called the percentage of heart rate max, the carbonin method or heart rate reserve, and the RPE method. So the goal for the lab is to perform three bouts of exercise. That is six minutes each using the three different methods of prescribing exercise, the ones that I just mentioned. You're going to compare the energy expended for each bout of exercise using the metabolic equations to determine calories. Right? And you can also look at the example calculations and on your lab manual and on the additional example um, document that I'm posting on Canvas. From there, you'll be able to compare the responses by graphing heart rate and RPE versus time. So you will have a template posted on Canvas. That is the Excel template that you can use to input uh, that data that you collect in lab and that you will be able to graph for that six minute bout of exercise at that constant work rate. So for the procedures, the pre-test phase, you're going to need to calculate that target intensity range. So for each one of the methods, you're going to calculate 60% and 70% using the specific uh, equations, right, for each of the methods. So for the zero to peak, you need to calculate 60% and 70% using the heart rate max method. For the second bout of exercise, you need to use the carbonin method, the heart rate reserve method, and you need to calculate 60% and 70% using the heart rate reserve method, using that HRR equation. And for the last bout of exercise, bout number three, that's the RPE method, you don't need to perform any calculations. You just need to perform that exercise between an RPE of 14 and 16, right? So no calculations need to be performed for this. You're using the RPE table, which is very subjective, right? You will be exercising at a 14 to 16 of perceived exertion, of how hard 
you perceive the exercise to be. So you're going to be able to select a resistance on the bike that allows you to perform that exercise at that perceived exertion, 14 to 16, which is very subjective, right? But you'll try your best to be within this range. So a very important thing before I uh, close and let you um, all work is that once you have calculated that target intensity range, you'll be able to select the resistance on the bike that allows your lab partner to exercise within that uh, intensity range, right? 60 to 70%. So just note that you must adjust the work rate, otherwise um, also called like the resistance on the bike until your partner is working within that target heart rate range. So once you have achieved this, you do not change the work rate, right? You do not change the resistance on the bike. This is where the exercise phase begins and you only record this data. So these are the procedures. Please go through them um, in detail before coming into lab. These are the data sheets that you're going to use. There's three different ones for all three different bouts of exercise that we're going to do. And this is your lab manual. For one of the tables that you need to fill out, you need to use these formulas here at the top to uh, calculate that 60% intensity and 70% intensity using the different methods. And that's it. Thank you, 405. Happy studying.